2 Kings chapter 2, and uh, we'll, we'll begin in verse 1. This is the story of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah, Elisha. I'm going to try to pronounce those correctly for you today. If you've been in church any time, then you've, you've heard this story. We're going to read about it. But Elijah was a prophet of God, and he's taken up into heaven by a whirlwind in a chariot of fire. But before this takes place, Elisha asked him for a double portion of his anointing. How many of you know the story? So let's pick it up here, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And the title of the message this morning is Recognizing God-Ordained Relationships or Connections. Can you say amen? amen. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Are you there? When the Lord was about to take, now I'm going to read a good bit of scripture here. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up into heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. Verse 3, the group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but, but, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went together to Jericho. Verse 5. Then a group of prophets from Jericho came to Elisha and asked him, did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I do, Elisha answered, but be quiet about that. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has told me to go down to the Jordan River. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I'll never leave you. So they went on together. Verse 7. Fifty men from the group of the prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped by the river Jordan. Then Elisha folded his cloak together and, stuck, and struck the water, and it divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground. Verse 9. When they came to the other side, Elisha said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you, tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. Let me have a double portion of the anointing that you're walking under. Amen. Verse 10. You've asked a very difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I'm taken from you, then you can you'll get your request. But if not, then you won't. Verse 11, as they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire, and it drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elijah tore his clothes in distress. Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he, had take, when he was taken up, and Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. Lord, I thank you for the reading of your word this morning. Again, I ask you publicly, as I have done privately, that you would take out every single thing in each person's heart that doesn't belong there, take that stony heart out and put in a heart of flesh today, that they would receive everything that you have for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm hoping that the the reading of the word this morning, and, and, and I hope this every Sunday, but the reading of the scriptures, the study of the word, that your faith will be encouraged, that your faith will rise and understand that the Lord has destined, everybody say destined, the Lord has destined certain individuals to be a part of your life, amen, a connection. Right connections will always lead to right destinations. Can you say Amen. If you don't allow the right connections to take place in your life, then there's a major chance you will not get the right destination or the right destiny. You've got to allow the Lord to make those hookups. Amen? In other words, wrong connections can delay the assignments that the Lord has you. Wrong connections can, de can delay life's destiny for you. I'm standing up here right now trying to figure out when to bring up... Uh, something that somebody saw that went to heaven. And I just feel like right now, I just, I just need to go ahead and say it because I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to get through this until, this until I say this. I had the opportunity 
to do, a, and you say an opportunity to do a funeral. Yeah, I had an opportunity to do a funeral of someone that's gone to heaven. The ones that are difficult are the ones that you know didn't go to heaven. This is an easy one. A gentleman by the name of Rodney J. Owens. I've only known Rodney or Jay for maybe a couple of months or so. Lynn, his wife, is sitting right here. And, yeah. So he had a couple of, about two, two weeks ago or so, he had a heart attack or getting ready to come to church, had a heart attack, took him to the hospital, and it was a bad thing. It was, he was gone. Now, y'all just hang with me because you got to hear this. He was gone. But due to the prayers of the family and everybody praying and, Guess what? Got him back. Now, he was a little upset about that because he'd been to heaven. And so, uh, you know, the first time I saw him, you know, he was, he was not awake. He was, was like, I don't know, 36 hours, 48 hours after the surgery. So the next time I saw him was last Wednesday. I'm sitting, uh, sitting around. I told, I told Pastor Kim, you know what? I need to go up to the hospital. I need to go see Jay. Just felt in my spirit I need to go see him. Went up there, and he's, he's laying there in the bed just fine, talking. You know, matter of fact, I had to try to tell him sometime, calm down now, just relax, you know. And uh, he told me about heaven. He went to heaven. He said that uh, there was a gold train, locomotive engine, just and he said it was gold like, I mean, it's gold like you know, but it's not gold like you know. But it's gold. And he said and people were getting on it. He said, but I, I wasn't on it. I was picking up gold nuggets that was on the ground all around. And I was putting them in buckets. And um, he said I had five buckets and I was picking up this gold. And he said, the Lord said, and I said, did you see the Lord? He said, no, I didn't see him, but I heard him. He asked me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm picking up this gold. He said, for what? He said, to put it in the ministry, to get God's work done. And he said, the Lord said to him, you don't have to do that. It's already yours anyway. Come on, somebody. The Bible says all the gold and the silver is his. You know, you can always back things up with scripture. And that, boy, that really hit me, hit me good because, you know, as a, as a pastor, as a, as a, you, you're building a new church and, you know, how many know that takes gold? <laughs> They don't build it free. It takes gold. Right, right. And it's not that I ever, I, I, it's not that I worry about it, but boy, that hit me good. I am not, I'll just use that word worry. I'm not worried about it anymore. <laughs> We're building, and that's it. <laughs> we, we're just building. We, we have to. So I thought, you know what? If this guy's been to heaven, I'm going to ask some questions. I hadn't been to heaven. He's been to heaven. And uh, he said, you know what? There's fish in heaven. I said, there's fish in heaven. You know, you, you're sitting there, you're thinking, okay. Fish. He said, yeah, the big fish. I said, you like the fish? He said, oh, yeah, I love the fish. You're going to get the fish in heaven. I said, well, are, are there any animals in heaven? He said, yeah, I saw. I said, what did you see? He said, I saw some cows. <laughs> I said, you saw cows, huh? Don't that sound funny? You saw cows. The Lord spoke to me. Give me the scripture. He said, you know, I own all the cattle on a thousand hills. I said, I believe you saw some cows. He said, I did. He actually said they were on a hill. I don't even think he knew the scripture. Anyway. I said, what else you see? He said, well, first of all, everything's alive. He said, I had a cup of living water. He said, I'd like to have a cup of that right now, actually. He said, I don't know how to explain it, but when you drink it, it's like all your blood. It's just like you just are alive. He said, everything's alive. Flowers were talking to me. <laughs> Flowers are talking to you? Yeah. Here comes the scripture. The Lord said, if you won't praise me, the very rocks will cry out to me. Come on, somebody. I said, I believe the flower spoke to you. He said, I'm telling you, they speak to you. It's real, people. He said the sky, the water was so crystal pretty and the, the sky was so blue. He said, Pastor, you don't understand. 
It's, it's blue, but it's not blue like you know. But it's blue. He said, I could have just sat there and looked at the sky from now on and never got tired of it. I said, Jay, now, Lynn, you're sitting in there. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what he's saying. I'm, huh? I'm not adding, I'm not, you know, I'm not evangelizing this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Evangelistically speaking, you know. I said, if you could, right now, if you could get on that train and you could go to heaven right now, I know how much you love your family. Would you stay here or go? He didn't even hesitate, did he? He said, I, I'm gone. See, he didn't get on that train. Other words, getting on the train. So about 5.30, I got up there probably 4.15, 4.30, and about 5.30, I actually said, I, I need to go. I need to leave you alone. You know, you're, you're just too excited, you know. And came on, I came on to church that evening, and then I got a call that evening when I got home that Jay had passed on. And I was like, what? No. No, no, he didn't. He can't. I, I, I was looking forward to getting to know Jay. But, but Lynn said when I had gone and it was about 6 o'clock, he started getting fidgety, couldn't rest, turned around in the bed, didn't said he just didn't feel good. He just, and I, if I'm not mistaken, the way it kind of happened, you pretty much just said, look, do you want to go home? Yes, yes. And she said he just looked at her and, kind of blinked his eyes and just got on that train. Amen. You know what? This is not Bible, but he did. He, when it, there was no scripture for this, but at least not yet. I hadn't got one. But he said he saw his heart when they were working on it, and the lady had it in her, in her hand, the nurse, and it was gold. And I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Then I got to say, and this is not Bible here, but, you know, have you ever heard anybody say, that man's got a heart of gold? <laughs> I just thought it was so cool, man. Folks, heaven is real. More real than you are sitting in that chair right now. And he's preparing a place for you even now. So listen, don't, don't mess up. And miss heaven. There's a house being, there's a place being prepared for you right now with your name on it. Can you say amen? amen. Wrong connections can delay your destiny in this life. How many of you really want to go round and round and round out in the wilderness every day? No, you don't want to do that. Amen. You don't want to go round and round and round and, you know, how many, you know, you need to learn quickly. Quit making the same mistakes. If you allow the wrong voices to influence your life, then you could end up making the wrong choices. you got to listen to the right voices. Amen. One of the most important decisions you'll ever make, now knowing Jesus is the number one, but another important decision is who are you allowing God, I mean, who are you allowing to come into your life that God has not sent. You've got to be sure that God sent this person, this, whether it be, uh, you know, in a connection in a business partner, it, it, any connection where you've got somebody that you are allowing to speak into your life. You've got, let me put it this way, you've got to watch out who you associate with. Amen. Well, I've got all these people at work, I've got to work with them, but you don't have to associate with them regularly. You don't have to go where they go and do what they do. You need to lead and quit following. Amen. God gets his work done here on this earth through people. Can you say amen to that? But you know what else? The enemy also gets his work done through people here on this earth. So you have to be constantly protecting yourself, watching yourself, and don't allow the enemy to let just anybody come into your life. And let them dictate to you. They, they speak into your life. You can't just let anybody speak into your life. Amen? So relationships that you find yourself in can be a detriment to God's destiny for your life, or it can be a catalyst. In other words, it can set you back, or it can spring you forward. And God can do more in that quick than man could do in a lifetime. 
You know what? I, God can do more in the anointing on your life than I could do in, in hours and hours of preaching to you. Not that we don't need the word now, but if the anointing gets on you and in you, you'll have revelation that passes all understanding. It'll be one of those deals where you know that you know that you know and can't anybody talk you out of it. Come on now. Your connection with people, it's a spiritual thing, whether it be good or evil. There's some powerful God-ordained relationships that God has for you. You've got to recognize them. I'm telling you right now, I would not be standing in this pulpit here this morning if it hadn't been for some of the God-ordained relationships that have been connected in my life. No doubt about it. And the Lord continues and will continue to put people in my life that I can learn from, that I can grow in the things of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Everybody that you come across in life can't and won't go where you're going. They can't. They, in other words, they won't stay the course. You know, it's funny how people are like, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, until it gets tough. Until the new wears off. Now we're getting into a marriage conference now. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you, you're going to enjoy yourself come Friday night. It's going to be good. But you know what? You don't have to be rude to people. You don't have to be mean to people. But they have to understand that you've drawn a line in the sand now. You have to listen to people. If you hadn't done it, you've got to draw that line. You've got to draw a line in the sand and don't let anybody, any person, any, anything draw you across that line. In other words, say this. Say, I, I am not, not going to compromise the Word of God. Amen. You are not going to compromise the Word of God. You're going to stand on the Word and that's it. Rock solid. Period. Folks, when you make that decision, it's over. Nobody can pull you one way or another. So you've got to quit wasting time on your destiny being tangled up with the wrong people, the wrong person, the wrong connection. Because you know what? We don't have, time is short. We don't have time to wait. Who's got time to waste? Matter of fact, it's the most valuable thing you have, time. You can't get yesterday back. It's gone. It ain't ever coming back. And we talk about it around her all the time. You have now. You have right now. That's all that is guaranteed right now. If you could put on some sort of 3D glasses, spiritual glasses, people are coming and going. It's constant. People are dying, being born, dying, being born, dying, being born. Constant. Constant, constant. Amen. So my point is, your days are numbered. The Lord knows that day. I'm reminded of one uh, back in, uh, I, 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 I love history, especially all, like all the wars. Any, any guys in here like the, like, like the war stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. And Stonewall Jackson once, the general the Confederate Army, he would just lead a charge, man, just go right out in the middle of everything. Now, I don't think it's kind of crazy, to be honest with you, but he led his men. And somebody asked him one time, what, don't you know that's kind of dangerous? You know, you, man, there's bullets flying everywhere and you right out in the middle? And he said, the Lord knows when I'm going to lead you from here. Now, I think it's a little, <laughs> a little crazy to do that, but that's a man of faith right there. He wasn't no more worried about it. He was ready to meet his maker. Amen? Just faith, man. But we don't have any time to waste, people. Time is short. I want to take a few minutes this morning just to kind of set that up. I want us to look at some principles and some biblical examples that will help you make sure that you are connected to the right people. Amen. Principle number one. Good things happen through relationships. This is very simple. Good things happen through relationships that God set up. Amen. Bad things happen to relationships that God didn't set up, that man set up, or in, the enemy comes in. And, you know, some people think that they can, think they can just go through life all by themselves. They don't need anybody else. But you can't, people. You'll be miserable. We need each other. Actually, it's the devil's plan to separate, to separate God's ordained connections, to separate. Deuteronomy 32, the Bible says, 
One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000. So we need each other. Can you say amen? And then, you know, you can keep multiplying that out, and we can just get about, it, listen, you don't need but about seven, eight people, and you can, my God. I don't even know the math there is like that many. That's a bunch. Amen? You know the old saying, the banana that gets separated from the bunch is the one that gets peeled and eaten, peeled and destroyed. So the devil wants to separate. Amen? Principle number one, good things happen through relationships that God sets up. Principle number two, when God connects you to others, when he's ordained you to be with this person, to be with these people, however, it's a sign of his blessings for a transition in your life. Anybody know any good God connections in your life right now? You think about them. Whenever you're about to go to a new level, whenever you're about to go into a new season or walk with God, God will send somebody along there to help you get there. Amen. He, that, they're there to help you, not to hurt you. So number two, God-connected people are a blessing. Principle number three, these are very quick. Undeveloped potential can be unlocked in your life, because you know you got some undeveloped potential, and nobody in here arrived yet, right? Undeveloped potential can be unlocked in your life if you'll recognize those that God's put in your life. There's some undeveloped potential in your life that can come out by somebody coming and telling you about it let me put it this way we don't see ourselves normally like somebody else sees it if you think oh well, i can't do that man i can't i don't feel and somebody goes yes you can man you got this i can see it all over you but you don't feel that so God sends those people in there to encourage you and help you to say, look, look, it might be a challenge, but I know the Lord's put it in you. Come on, somebody. You know people like that, don't you? And you do. And you actually, you know, people that you have said you can do it. You got this. How I many know we it's not that we have to believe in ourselves. We do. We have to we have to just trust God and know that he knows he knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. People that are there that God led to you, led, led to you to get you out of the box of being comfortable all the time and stretching you. Amen. Now, we got to be careful. we got to be careful because, remember, God uses people and the enemy uses people. So you ought to be careful of people that come along that, how do you say this, that, that are helping you. Not folks that get you off track, that you find yourself, oh my gosh, what's happening here, you know? And, and look, let me tell you what the, the, the devil will do. He'll send, he'll send people out of the body of Christ that have agendas, and they'll begin to speak things in your life that is not from God at all. Well, this person's a prophet, and they told me, listen, I, I may just go ahead and give you a warning, or, or let me just try to help you here. Anything that is spoken in your life from a prophet standpoint should, be, should always be confirmation to you. It should never be information. It should never be like, well, I never heard that before. You have to test these things, people. Just because somebody wrote a book, just because somebody has a big ministry, come on now. The analogy I like to always use, you know, the Lord tell, he's telling me, I see you in Africa. I see you doing this and that. And you don't even like to leave your backyard. You ain't ever thought about Africa? Not ever one time in your entire life. You wipe that in a way. It's got to be confirmation like, you know, golly, I know, I know, yep, yep. And I'm not saying that everything has to be comfortable, you know. I mean, you know, there can be some stretching going on in your life. But you just, you just know that you know that that's right. Because people's lives are getting screwed up, messed up. Because they just, maybe they respect, respect this person or whatever, and, and they just do it. Going around that mountain, going around that mountain, going around that mountain. Can't, can't figure out why is it, nothing seems to be working. If nothing seems to be working, then you need to make some changes. You need to go back to the beginning and let's start over. Amen. Because if it's God, it's going to work. 
Is there going to be struggles? There could be. But you'll go around them, through them, over them, however you need to. Can you say amen? I feel like I'm doing a marriage seminar already. Recognize, be aware, look out for God's connections in your life. Now, let me give you a quick example. I'm going to give you a couple. How many of you remember the prophet Samuel? He goes to the house of Jesse. How many of you know how many, how many sons did Jesse have? He had eight. Seven. He said, Bring me, here's your sons. We've got seven sons right here. One of them's going to be the king of Israel. Him, nope, him, nope, him, nope, him, nope. You ain't got any more sons? Well, I got one out there in the back back there tending the sheep. Little scrawny thing. Well, bring him here. How many of you know the story? Bring him here. And so David comes in. He goes, that's the next king of Israel. You know, man doesn't pick what God picks. He has no way he can do it. Nope, that's the one right there. Get the oil out. Let's anoint him. Are you hearing me? And he becomes king of Israel. Continuing on with David, if you know anything about the story, he later, Hey, glory. And so, <laughs> okay, Pastor Mike, what's happening? Well, the, some, I'm not real good at double tasking or whatever. So the Lord's talking to me, so I'm just hanging on a second. Hallelujah. So David ends up having a, an adulterous affair with, guess who? Bathsheba. Doesn't sound real good, does it? So what does God do? He sends another prophet by the name of Nathan to reveal David, to reveal to David his sin. If God had not sent Nathan to David to reveal that, you know what? David would have just kept hiding it, covering it up. How I many you know you can you can cover your sin up from man, but you can't cover it up from God. You can look like everything, man, you know, that such and such a person, but they got it all together. But we don't know. It may look like it, but it at home or what it could be hell. And I'm not saying you need to put a good face on, but I'm, what I am saying is you, you need to get out of the sin. Amen. So God sent Nathan to help rescue David from his sin. You know, sometimes God will send people into our lives and speak things to us that we don't want to hear. But we know it's right. Thank God for those people. Thank God for those people that will take hold of the truth and speak it to you in friendship and in love and not to condemn. I thank God for people in my life that have has corrected me over over my life. I think it may be one time. I think one time I How many know what I'm talking about? So Nathan tells David of his sin, and immediately David goes from he shifts from a season of sin to a season of repentance. It's all in you can read about it in 2 Samuel eleven and twelve, but that's the story. You can go read about it. Your destiny is not just connected to you and God. It's to you and God and whoever he puts in your life. Can you say amen? Your destiny is connected to you and God and your spouse or whoever. Your business partner, your, your pastor. Amen. Here's the key though. It is your responsibility to recognize those people. You have to recognize it. If you don't recognize it, then it's not going to do you any good. It ain't going to do anybody else any good. You have to recognize it because, see, God's plan is not just to bless you. It's you to move on. and be, It's just like, come on, it's like me standing here today. It's not like, you know, I'm Superman. Now she's shaking her head. I'll give her an opportunity in marriage conference. <laughs> but... You're being fed the Word of God, and that's helping you. It's a connection. Come on now. It's a connection. Go to the book of Acts chapter 9. Let's look at the Scripture here. Paul is on the road to Damascus. Actually, at the time, he's known as Saul. It wasn't Paul, and he's out killing Christians or having them killed. He's 
enslaving Christians, putting them in prison. And, and you know the story, God knocks him off his horse and he's blind for three days and then he's instructed to go see a, a man by the name of Ananias. Look at verse 17, Acts 9, 17. You know, you have to back up everything with the word of God, people. Amen? Amen. Verse 17 says, Acts 9, 17, are you there? And Ananias went his way and he entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, that's verse 18, immediately they fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and he was baptized. Here's the point. Sometimes you don't, you don't see things like you ought to see them. Sometimes God's trying to get you to see something or understand something, and he'll send somebody along the way to remove those scales from your unbelieving eyes or from your doubtful eyes. Come on now. To speak life into you. That's one of my responsibilities to do that. To speak life. To preach the word of God. That it goes down on the inside and goes and does what man can't do. I can't do it. But the Word of God can. Amen. Amen. Relationships, people that come into your life and tell you that you're going the wrong way. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to put you under any kind of pressure, but you're headed the wrong way. Stop doing those things that you're doing and get back. Let's just get back in the boat or let's get back on that straight and narrow and get off that crooked road. It's the straight and narrow that leads to heaven. It's the crooked road that will lead straight to hell. Amen. You ever heard the saying that uh, love is blind? You ever heard that? Everybody else can see that the person you're with, the partnership, the business partner, whatever, is not the person you need to be with. Everybody can see it but you. Amen. You've got to make sure your relationships, business partnerships, whatever, is God-ordained. And God will have somebody come along and tell you, look, you're headed the wrong way, man, or lady, or whatever. I don't want to call a lady man. You're headed the wrong way, dude. That, that don't work either. What do you call a woman? You're headed the wrong way, ma'am. It is a southern name. I was at a store one day shopping, and, and I said There's something about ma'am, and, and the lady looked at me and said, please don't call me ma'am. Makes me feel old. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't, how do, how do you, I can't correct that. That's in me, man. Huh? If you one day older than me, it's yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. That's why I was brought up. If you weren't brought up in the South, you weren't brought up right. <laughs> Sorry. See, this is where the Southern people go, amen, or, or, or either say, roll tide. They do do that. They do that. <laughs> Woo, I had to put a little life into y'all this morning. Look, look, this person of warning, because listen, it really is a warning. It's a warning. The, the Lord will warn you. He will, and thank God he will. Because, you know, sometimes you actually may think you're going the right way. And he'll send somebody. It could be a friend. It could be your best friend. It could be, could be, a, it could be a stranger. It could be next-door neighbor. It could be your pastor. But he'll send somebody to let you know, hey, guys, Watch out here. You're not going the right way. And see, here's the thing, though. I've already said this. Our responsibility to recognize this. It is your choice. You still have a free will. God's not going to make you do anything. No more than I can make you do anything. You make your own decisions. Right by yourself. You may have help with somebody, you know, but you ultimately, you have to make that decision. Can you say Amen. But nevertheless, God's going to do everything he can to make sure that you don't mess up your life. 
it's just too short, people. I mean, I know you think we have, you know, I have an 85 year, 90 year, or whatever. It's just not very long. And it, you start getting busy for the Lord, and it'll just pick up speed. It goes a whole lot faster. How many of y'all can believe it's almost Christmas? I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the time when the, in, in 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 the in the stores they start putting Christmas stuff out around March the 30th. <laughs> right? See, young people don't understand what I'm saying. You f folks that are 40 and over or so, you remember as a kid, Christmas just it never came, <laughs> and you were in high school for like 40 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. It'll be Christmas tomorrow. <laughs> well, what's that about? Time is flying by. You don't have any time to waste. It's your most precious commodity, time. God has sent people in your life on purpose to help open up your doors of destiny. Amen. You got to pray, God... S I, I, help me recognize the right people. Help me recognize the right church. Help me recognize the right job. Young people, help me recognize the right spouse. Help me. I don't, I'm done making mistakes. I just have to know my next step. Now, some of it's just a, it's a, a step of faith. But you understand what I'm saying. Let me just say this. If you get a check, I mean, I, it might be small. We'll just put it on uh, uh, buying an automobile. That's a big purchase. And they're putting pressure on you. You know, the deal is just today. It's just today. Here's the deal. No, it ain't just today. Uh-oh. There's, there's somebody in here owns a car business. I better be careful. You ever say, I shouldn't have bought that car. And I shouldn't have bought that car. I didn't need that payment. You knew all along you shouldn't have bought it. And then, Lord, can you help me get me out of this? I don't know. He might, he might not. You bought the car. He told you already from the beginning, don't do that. You knew it. Am I telling the truth? Now, I'm not saying, you know, don't be afraid to make a decision. But you'll know. You know what's right. I mean, we can just get like real easy things. Should I take that drug? Should I smoke that dope? This ain't hard. Should I go drinking with the guys? They all gonna get drunk. I don't hang with those people anymore. That's not me anymore. I don't do that anymore. They can follow me or go on. You love people, but you don't have to do what people tell you to do. You do what the Word says to do. I was talking with Bradley yesterday at the funeral, and he was just talking about how he's so excited that he's serving the Lord now. He said, I don't come home drunk no more, sleep better. I don't have to worry about what I did or what I said or what I didn't do or what I did and I didn't know I did. And it, I, I said to him the same thing I say to ever say this all the time. He, I said, aren't you, aren't you upset with yourself that you waited so long? There ain't no, there's nobody in here this morning, nobody under the sound of my voice, that if you're not saved, you hadn't thought about it a lot. You think about it all the time. I wish I could be like that guy. I wish I could be that, like that girl. You don't want to be like any of them. You just want to be the way the Lord made you. But in order to do that, you have to accept him. You have to have a personal relationship with him. And listen, as difficult as it may seem, well, you just don't, Pastor, you have no idea what I'm going through. I mean, I'm, I'm in a deep hole. There's no hole too deep for God. None. Nowhere. No how. Amen. 
He got a long arm. And he'll reach down, he'll pull you up out of that hole, and you'll never be the same again. Habits that you might have right now that are not good habits, the Lord can just pew, strip it right out of your body. Well, I'm addicted to this, or I'm addicted to that, or I got this problem with this. He can clean you up. I'm telling you right now. He can clean you up just like that. And you can be white as snow. And you'll never have that problem again in your life. He can do that? Oh, he can do that and more. You got off your message, didn't you? I got on God's message. You have to understand in your walk with the Lord at work or wherever, you know, just your daily life, we've got to quit looking at people as you, you see Pastor Sam, you see him. You've got to quit seeing him and see what's inside. Quit. Well, that guy, so he ain't ever going to serve the Lord. Look at him. He's this and that and big old guy. and he's just, it, Quit looking at appearances or, or that they got it all together. You speak to that spirit, the one that's wanting the word of God. So if you don't know the Lord, you need to know him. You can know him today. And you, listen, you, you can even find somebody that you know knows the Lord, and they can talk to you about him, and they can lead you. They can lead you right, right to Jesus. Because they're in the same boat you are today if you're not born again. They're sitting there thinking, man, I wish I could be like that. You know why I know that? Because... I was just like that. I mean, know what I'm talking about. I can stand up here and tell you all the wrong things. But I don't have to tell you what's wrong. You know what's wrong. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. And you know you need Jesus. Because he formed you. He made you. You remember Daniel and the three Hebrew boys? Oh. Uh, I just forgot them. Shadrach, Meshach, <laughs> yeah, you remember them, but I don't. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're in a very hostile environment. I mean, they're with King Nebuchadnezzar. He's wanting them to bow down. He, they won't eat his meat. They won't drink his wine. They won't, they're not going to bow down. They're not going to do what he said do. And see, here's my point. You've got Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. God connected them guys together so they would be able to stand. They were there helping. You know what? It's, 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 it's one thing, you know, to do something on your own, but if you've got a, somebody with you, standing by your side, come on now. Well, like I said, one puts 1,000 to flight, two puts 10,000 to flight. So we need that help. Connected them together, and they, look, even though they were thrown in that king's fire, they didn't even get seen. Can you say amen? Put them together. He said, why did you tell me that? Because there's some people in here this morning. Now, it may not be everybody, but there are people in here this morning that you're working or you're, you're in a hostile environment. You're in an environment where, you know, there may not even be any Christians. You know, and it's so funny how people go, Pastor, could you pray for me? What, what, what's the deal? Well, there's, you know, there's 10 employees at work and even the, even the, even the owner is, he's the devil. He's the devil. And I just, you know, I just got to get out of there. Your light shines the brightest in a dark place. Amen. Nobody said it was going to be real easy. So you know what you need to be doing instead of, God, get me out of here. Say, Lord, either send somebody in here with me or let me get some of these people born again here. Amen. And if there's nobody there, and look, we'll, I'll, even go this, I'll even make it this easy for you. Just testify, just, just live the life you're supposed to be living and invite them to church. 
We'll do our best to clean them up. But you know who really does the cleaning, don't you? You remember? You remember when you were flopping around in a boat like a fish? So what was that about? That's just between me and somebody else right now. But it was a glorious time, wasn't it? You got to let people know at work and your friends and neighbors and everything. You got to let them know I've made a change in my lifestyle. Don't you be embarrassed. Well, I don't know what to say to them. You just tell them. I, look, here's what you tell them. Here's what you tell them. You know what? I ain't going to be going down to Florida with you anymore. I'm not going to be going down there and getting drunk with you anymore. I, I've ch my life has changed. I'll go. You know, I had somebody the other day say they had some relatives coming in, and the relatives are, uh, you know, they're just worldly people. I mean, they do what worldly people do. But this person said, look, we, we really, pre you know, we're looking forward to y'all coming. However, you ain't bringing that stuff in my house. You're not bringing it in. This is my house. And you ain't bringing that stuff in here. What you do outside, is your place, that's your business. But here in this house, that don't belong in here. That's the wrong spirit. You're bringing the wrong spirit in here. You know, and this is one of the things that really gets off on people. I don't know where, where, how the church got here. They just listen to the wrong people. Well, you can drink. You can. Drink all you want. But you ain't bringing it in my house. Because it's the wrong spirit. Ain't that what it's referred to? And I've said this a million times. What you take in, what spirit you take in, you come under the control of that spirit. That's why you start drinking, your mouth starts getting dirty. Start, start saying things you wish you hadn't said, start doing things. This is not condemnation, but folks. This is just, this should be conviction here. And then all of a sudden, you wake up one morning and you look to your left and you're not with the person that you're supposed to be with. All you got to do, how many ever watch live PD? Can't even walk a straight line. <laughs> Say stuff, and it's, it's, listen, we say that's the alcohol speaking, isn't it? You know what it is? What? It's that spirit speaking. Rebellious. Get your hands off me. Don't do, ah, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, we're laughing. I mean, it's funny, but it ain't funny, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm just, I'm just, I just, I'm just, Gonna say it. Said it anyway, so doesn't matter. Why why you gotta do that anyhow? But it calms me, calms me. Or what are you stressed about? Or you just don't understand. No, I do. Let me tell you something. I do. Y'all no, I shouldn't say that. There are people that stress me out. <laughs> but I don't go get me a drink. <laughs> Amen. I should have said that. <laughs> That's not true. You know what? <laughs> For those that understand, I'm drinking right now. I'm starting to move slow because I'm drinking right now. <laughs> and it feels good. <laughs> uh, you know what? You can look at me like, what's he doing? 
I'm enjoying myself. You get, you get, you drink of the new wine. You drink of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. The devil wants you involved in wrong relationships so he can stop the call on your life. Just because you are born again doesn't mean that the enemy just goes, oh, well, I guess ain't nothing going to do about that now. When you get born again, that's when the attack comes. Now, I'm not talking about an attack that he wins, because you win. But until then, you're his anyway. He could care less. Now you done ticked him off. But it don't matter. I like the devil to be ticked off. Try to tick him off every day. Because he can't, he can't do anything about it. <laughs> you say amen. Elijah saw something that Elijah had, and he wanted it, and he started following him. And see, that's the problem with so many folks. They just don't want the things of God bad enough. What you want is what you'll pursue. That's pretty easy, people. What you want is what you'll pursue. It's, the, it's, it's Pastor Jonathan's message this morning. It's, you know, putting action to something, you'll find out what somebody really wants. Well, I want to be at church. Well, then you'll be at church. Well, I want to be. No, you don't. <laughs> you can tell me you want to be or you want to do this or that. Then you'll do it. Amen. You want to fulfill the lust of your flesh? Then you'll pursue fleshly desires. Because the flesh, you have to understand, the flesh is contrary to the spirit. That's why we have to walk in the spirit and not the flesh. We've talked about this a few weeks ago. You've got to crucify. You've got to beat that flesh down and say, no flesh, you're not going to control me anymore. I'm not doing that. Because it's a fleshly desire. And your spirit man is going, wait, come on. You feel that. You feel it on the inside. You feel that nudging. But you just give in to the flesh. I tell you what, I am, I, am, I am blessed to have some powerful relationships that God's put in my life. Spiritual, I mean, spiritual men and women of God that have spoken. I know, you go, you, I, I know you might get tired of this, but I just keep pronouncing it over my life. I am a blessed man. Highly, highly favored. <laughs> and you are too. You've got to see yourself that way. You've got to begin to recognize who you are. Why, well, how many times are you going to tell me that? Till you get it. Jonathan, come on this morning. Elijah, or Elisha, was willing to follow Elijah anywhere he went. You know why? Because that's what was required for him to receive a double. See, see this, the main reason why people don't make that connection with God's connections is because they're just not willing to sacrifice. No sacrifice, or you know, I think the old saying is no pain, no gain. No sacrifice, no gain. I'm telling you right now, no disrespect to you at all. You have to understand what I'm about to say. I love you all. I really do, genuinely. But if I'm talking to you on the phone, and some of these people that God has ordained and put in my life call me while I'm talking to you, we done talking. <laughs> I'm taking the call. Because they may have something very profound are you hearing me? I'm, I'm talking about, it's not, I'm, 
I'm talking about folks that don't just call me. I call them. They don't just call me. I call them. If I see that number come up on the phone and I'm talking to you, excuse me, I got to go. Well, hang on, I wasn't finished telling you about that. I'm sorry, I'll call you back in a minute. Come on now, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about God-ordained relationship that you know when that call comes in, something's coming up. Let me put it this way. I can appreciate your prayer, okay? Now, please don't take this wrong. But my pastor, I don't run and say, hey, listen, pastor, let me pray for you. No, I want him to pray for me. I don't need to pray for him. I pray for him on my own. Let me pray for you. I think I may even get to the point where I tell people, that's okay. I don't need your prayer right here. You pray for me on your own time. Well, who who do you think you are? I think I'm your pastor. Are you hearing me? And I'll pray for you. And the anointing I have can get on you. See, and I, I, I bind the enemy right now because I, I, I feel that spirit right now floating around. Well, he, my God, he don't. You better hear what I'm saying in the spirit now. In the spirit. It's got nothing to do. Look, I don't talk like this in the flesh. I'm talking out of the spirit. And so Elisha had to follow the commands of Elijah. Because he wanted a double portion of that anointing. Can you say amen? Now let me just say this, because I don't want you to misunderstand. I need your prayers. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for Pastor Kim. We need you to lift us up. Pray protection, pray wisdom, pray revelation and understanding. Pray, actually, you know what I want you to pray for me? Wisdom. Wisdom. I need wisdom. To do, the, you know, to, to say the right things to people, to, to help people. There's, there's times that I just, I, I don't know what to do sometimes. And I need that. I need that prayer. Can somebody say amen? amen. Need that help. Amen. There comes a point in your life where you have to be willing to separate yourself from wrong relationships and get connected to God-ordained relationships. And look, listen, it could cause some friction. There could be some stormy waters. But here's the thing. What are you after? Are you after God's plan or are you after your plan? I like what Pastor Johnson said the other day. He said, this year... I'm not looking for the Lord to bless my stuff or my, my way. I'm going to find his and I'm going to go that way. Because just because it's something you, that you might desire, God can bless you. But I want to make sure that I'm in the middle of his plan, not just mine. Because if you're not careful, your flesh will, I'm telling you right now, your flesh will get in the way. Isaiah 55, 9, this is our memory verse for the week. If you'll put that up for me. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Lord, I want your thoughts. I want your ways. Amen? The question this morning is this. Who are you lifting up? Who are you praying for? Who are you serving? And, I, and please, don't misunderstand. We don't serve man in a sense that they're our God. Amen? But who, who are you praying for? Who are you serving? Who are you promoting? Who are you listening to on a daily basis? If it's not God-connected people, then you need, listen, you need to get away from that. If it is, then when you see them move up a level, you get to go with them. So when Elijah went up in the whirlwind, that anointing, his mantle, his cloak, that anointing fell down on Elijah. A double portion people recognize your God ordained
connections in your relationships. It can do nothing but benefit you and help you move along. Right. Amen? Amen? Stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just one moment. At the beginning of this service this morning, I told you about Jay and how he went to heaven. And I told you about what he saw and that there was a train that he got on. And I'm just telling you this morning, that train is passing right through here. You can make sure today that when you take your last breath, because we all going to take a last breath, we're going to breathe out our last breath short of the rapture, and we're going to leave this place. And you need to make sure, I'm, I mean 100% sure, there can't be any doubt that when you take your last breath, you catch that train. Because that's, that's a train you want to be on, a train of glory. So this morning, just by the simple raising of a hand, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know him personally, talk with him daily. He talks with you. You don't know 100% that you go to heaven if you died today. We want to pray for you today. If that's you, if you'll lift your hand, just lift it up and put it down. Thank you. Anybody else says, yep, that's me. I, I just, today, today I have to know. I can know today. Pastor Sam, come stand right over here for me, please. Play the congregation. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in here this morning and there's just some issues, just things going on that you just need somebody to agree with you in prayer. You're fine. You're, 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 you know you're going to heaven. That's not the issue here. It's just some things going on that you just want somebody to agree with you in prayer to stand with you because we need each other. If you have some things going on, you just lift your hand up and put it down real quick. Anybody say, yep, 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 yep. So now if you raise your hand, you come over here on this side right here. Just come stand right here. Come stand right here. Face the pulpit area I want you to pray for him and look at me look at me look at me look at me he raised his hand a minute ago I want you to pray with him look at me look at me brand new brand new I'm talking like not even out of the box yet. Brand spanking new. Don't worry about here. Look at here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you'll back up just a step. If you'll spread out a little bit for me. All of you. Okay. Billy, come around here, please. Fran, come here, please. Billy, stand right here. Pray for him. Miss Fran, come stand right here. Pray for her. Can y'all spread out a little bit for me right here? Carly, let me pray for this lady right here, Miss McLaughlin. Rodney, come pray for this gentleman here. Ron Spall, come here please.
Melanie, can you come here, please? Tini. Tini. Pray for her. Pray for her. Kim Martin, come here, please. See the young girl on the end? Megan, come here, please. Amanda. You pray as the Lord leads you to pray now. You don't have to be in a hurry. See, this is, this is the body of work right here. This is an extension of the body right here. This is a new day today. Make that commitment today. Draw that line in the sand. Some of you have drawn that line and you covered it up. And you draw that line, you covered it up. If you have to, dig a ditch. Make it evident that you're not going to go over there anymore. Show the Lord that you mean business this time. Amen. I decree and declare every single prayer right now that's being prayed and agreed on with these individuals here this morning. Every single one of them will come to pass. Every single need that has been requested will be met. Don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. You continue to stand strong and watch God work an absolute miracle. You coming forward this morning is a step of faith. You put in action. Now let's just believe God. Everybody lift your hands to heaven. Lord, we thank you that needs are being met. Supernatural things are happening. Behind the scenes that we can't see, but we know and trust that you're in control. Every need being met today, Lord. Every heart being purified. Lord, give us those opportunities as you do every day outside of these walls to be a witness for you. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for watching over us until we come again together. May we be the light 
that you called us to be in a dark place. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Shake somebody's hand out when you leave here this morning. Give them a hug. Invite somebody to church this next week. Don't forget tomorrow night, prayer at 7 o'clock, 7 to 8. We'll see you then. God bless you. Like